And our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked, Ayyu salati afdal? Which salah is the best salah? What is the best salah? So our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam responded to that question, that the best salah after the fard is the Salatul Layl. It is the Salah that is prayed at night. That is the Salah of Tahajjud. We just recited uh, Surah Isra verse 79. وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَتَهَجَّدْ بِهِ نَافِلَةً لَكَ And during the night, then pray Tahajjud as a nafila for you. عَسَى أَنْ يَبْعَثَكَ رَبُّكَ مَقَامًا مَحْمُودًا It is possible, it is likely that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will resurrect you upon the praiseworthy station. So a reminder to myself and all of you of the beauty of the salah, the benefits of the salah, the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned regarding salat al-tahajjud. And subhanAllah, do you know brothers and sisters that the very second revelation of the Qur'an that came down, encouraged our Prophet Sallallahu to pray tahajjud. يَا أَيُّهَا الْمُزَّمِّلْ قُمِ اللَّيْلَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا نِصْفَهُ أَوْ انْقُسْ مِنْهُ قَلِيلًا O you who is wrapped up, stand the night in prayer. Stand the night except a little bit of it. قُمِ اللَّيْلَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا نِصْفَهُ Half the night. أَوْ انْقُسْ مِنْهُ قَلِيلًا Or maybe a little bit less than half the night. أَوْ زِدْ عَلَيْهُ Or maybe even increase of the half. وَرَتِّلِ الْقُرْآنَ تَرْتِيلًا And recite the Qur'an with tartil during that half. So can you imagine from the very beginning, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is told to pray Salat Al-Tahajjud. And in Surah Isra, we just recited right now that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala mentioned to him, وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَتَهَجَّدْ بِهِ And in the night, do your tahajjud. نَافِلَةً لَكَ it is something that is nafila, it is not fard. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala comes down to the lower heavens in the last third of the night. Allah Himself descends down. Allah comes down in the last third of the night. And He asks, who is there that is praying? Who is there that is wanting to be forgiven? I shall forgive him. Who is there asking me? I will give him. Who is there invoking? I shall respond. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes down and he's saying, Who is there? Who's there? So our scholars have said, Anyone who wants a private audience with Allah, this is his opportunity. Anyone who wants to be engaged in a private conversation, Allah is opening his doors. Who is there? I will respond. Another scholar said, anybody who wants his dua to be answered, but he's not praying to Hajjud, doesn't really want his dua to be answered. You really want something, but you're not using this opportunity. Allah is telling you, who is there who's making dua? I will give him what he wants. Who is there asking me? I shall respond. Who is there wanting to be forgiven? I shall forgive him. In the last third of the night, that is the opportunity to engage in this private conversation. Now brothers and sisters, it is true that the best tahajjud is the last third of the night. That is no doubt about it. However, it is permissible to perform tahajjud earlier than this. And our scholars have said that the window of tahajjud is between Salatul Isha when you finish it and the beginning of the Adhan of Fajr. So when you finish praying Isha and before the Adhan of Fajr, this entire window is the opportunity of tahajjud. And some of the Sahaba, that not all the Sahaba are, 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 were able to pray in the last third. And Abu Huray radiallahu anh, because he was busy preparing, memorizing knowledge, whatnot, Abu Huray radiallahu anh, at certain points of his life was not able to pray in the last third of the night. So he advised his students that my, my master, my mentor, my Khalil, my beloved, meaning the Prophet system told me that whoever is not able to pray in the last part of the night, let him pray in the earlier part of the night. And so sometimes Abu Huraira would not wake up. He was not somebody that was wasting his time. He was doing khidmah to the religion. So he would pray to Hajjud before going to sleep after Salat al-Isha. In other words, brothers and sisters, those of us who are not able to wake up before Fajr by an hour, before Fajr by two hours, that is the ideal time. If you're not able to do that, then you may still share the blessings of tahajjud by praying tahajjud before going to sleep. And that is exactly what we are doing right now. We are able to get the share of Salat al-Tahajjud by praying after Isha and before going to sleep. And that is a habit that inshallah we should start now. But let's make this habit every single night of praying Salat al-Tahajjud. Our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, عَلَيْكُمْ بِقِيَامِ اللَّيْلِ I advise you, I encourage you to pray at night. Why? 
He gave us four or five reasons. Number one, he said, because it is the manner and the custom of the righteous people in all times and places. The salih, the good people, they would pray to Hajjud. When you pray to Hajjud, you will be amongst them. Number two, our Prophet wasallam said, it is maqrabatul lirrab. It brings you close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number three, our Prophet wasallam said, munhatun anil ithim. It prevents you from committing Committing sins. Brothers and sisters, when you pray to Hajjah that night, your day will also become more blessed. You cannot pray to Hajjah that night and then go about backbiting and stabbing and ghibah in the daytime. Your tahajjud will make you a better person. Number four, our Prophet ﷺ said, Mukaffiratul lidhunub. Your sins fall off. Your sins become nothing. Allah will forgive them. And number five, and this is an amazing blessing, our Prophet ﷺ said, and it removes the diseases from your body. In other words, he is saying even from a medical and a health perspective, Praying to Hajjud will make you more healthy. And these are the words of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is telling us, وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَتَهَجَّدْ بِهِ And during the night, pray to Hajjud. Any part of the night, the beginning of the night, the middle of the night, or the best is the last third of the night. And subhanAllah, the ending of this verse, Asa an يَبْعَثَكَ رَبُّكَ مَقَامًا mahmuda. Perhaps because you pray tahajjud, perhaps Allah will give you the maqam al-mahmud. And what is the maqam al-mahmud? It is the highest station given to any man. It is the highest maqam. It is the maqam that will be praised by all of mankind. The first of them and the last of them. The Hadith is in Sahih Bukhari that on the day of judgment, people are going to become worried, anxious, they will become terrified, and they will want judgment day to start. They're going to be so worried about the next step that they're willing to just get the results right here and now. And so they will go to our father Adam and they will say to Adam, Oh Adam, why don't you ask Allah to begin judgment day? We don't want to wait this long. And Adam alayhi salam will say, Today my Lord has become so angry. It is an anger he has never had before. He will never have again. So don't come to me. I'm worried about myself. Nafsi, nafsi. I'm not going to ask anything. Go to somebody else. Go to Nuh alayhi salam. So they will go to Nuh. The same conversation. He will also say, I'm worried about my sins and myself. And go to somebody else. Go to Ibrahim. Ibrahim will say the same thing. Say go to Musa. Musa will say the same thing. Say go to Isa. So this is now a delegation of all of mankind, Muslims, Christians, Jews, Buddhists, Hindus, everybody. Because on judgment day, everybody is going to know Islam is true. On judgment day, there is going to be but one God, everybody knows that is the true God. There's not going to be any difference of opinion. Then they will go to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and they will say, you are the one whom Allah has chosen. You are this, you are that. Can you stand in front of Allah and make shafa'a for all of us so that judgment day begins? And so the Prophet sallallahu will say, this is my job. Ana laha, ana laha. This is my task. This is my task. And he will then stand in front of the throne of Allah as the hadith says. And he will then fall in to sajda and stay there for as long as Allah wills. And the Prophet ﷺ said, at that point, Allah will teach me how to praise Him in a manner I don't know right now. He will teach me a new way to praise Him. I don't know how. And then Allah will say to me, Ya Muhammad ﷺ, irfa ra'sak. Sal tu'ta, ishfa' tu shaffa'. Raise up your head, Ya Rasulullah. Ask, you shall be given. Intercede, your intercession will be accepted. That is the maqam al-mahmood. The one person who will represent mankind, the delegate, the ambassador, that all of mankind will praise. Maqam al-mahmood, the praiseworthy maqam. This is the maqam al-mahmood. And it is the highest maqam any human is given. And only one person will be given it. And it is our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And look, this maqam was linked to salat al-tahajjud. وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَتَهَجَّدْ بِهِ نَافِدَةً لَكَ عَسَى أَنْ يَبْعَدْ so brothers and sisters, let us pray to Hajjud as much as we can. Whoever cannot pray every night, once a week, once a month, there should be something in our daily routine, weekly routine, monthly routine. Now by the way, uh, you should know, yes, by unanimous consensus, the Hajjud is nafil. It is not fard, it's not wajib. However, some scholars said that 
tahajjud was fard for the Prophet ﷺ. And others said that he made it fard upon himself. And that seems to be the correct opinion. Not that Allah made it fard, but he made it obligatory that I'm never going to leave tahajjud. And our Prophet ﷺ never left tahajjud in his entire life. My beloved brothers and sisters, praying tahajjud, the late night voluntary prayer, offers a unique opportunity for Muslims to strengthen their connection with Allah. This special time, often during the last third of the night, allows for intimate moments of devotion when the world is silent and distractions are few. It's a time for reflection, seeking forgiveness, and asking Allah for guidance, mercy, and blessings. By praying tahajjud, one builds a closer bond with Allah, achieving a sense of peace and spiritual upliftment that can be difficult to find during the hustle and bustle of daily life. Tahajjud also benefits for one's mental and emotional well-being. Waking up for these quiet, intentional prayers brings calmness and relieves stress, helping the individual develop patience and resilience. This quiet, focused time allows people to reflect on their lives, set positive intentions and become more aware of their emotions and actions. The discipline builds emotional stability and mental clarity which can improve focus and productivity in various aspects of daily life, whether at work, school or home. Moreover, Tahajjud helps build a disciplined routine which boosts productivity and positivity throughout the day. The act of consistently waking up for prayer fosters willpower and resilience, qualities that benefit all areas of life, not just spiritual growth. Physically, the gentle movement helps improve blood circulation and offers a beneficial routine that can impact overall health. Those who engage in this prayer often feel a unique se sense of accomplishment and motivation that sets a positive tone for the day, enhancing both personal and spiritual fulfillment.